This is the Show Up Show, helping coaches, service providers, leaders, and entrepreneurs to master showing up to build their brand, authority, and grow their business. Whether it's showing up on social media, in front of an audience, on a live interview, or an actual stage, this podcast is going to help you overcome visibility fear to confidently brand yourself as the authority in your industry. I'm Joan Chan, aka the Confidence and Visibility Queen, and I am on a mission to share how I went from a nobody to the confident leader I am today, what I have learned and what I have done to build my brand and business from scratch, and help you do the same so that you can make an impact in the world with the meaningful work that you do. Whether you are new to the business world or feeling unsure about public visibility, or you want to be seen and heard in a way that doesn't feel icky but authentic to you, you will discover how to become visible in your own unique way and show up as the confident entrepreneur you have always dreamed about becoming. Now, it's time to get you show up and be confidently visible so you can easily attract more clients and opportunities for yourself. Her first online business was a health coach and back then she thought she needed to grow a big following before anyone would ever want to invest in her coaching. She spent her first year focusing mostly on just posting free daily content and while her following grew, her bank account didn't and she almost quit on herself countless times. She knew there had to be a more effective way to attract coaching clients on social media that didn't require her dancing around on camera or cold DMing people she realized her messaging was the missing link. Today, she is the co-founder of Automate Me, a digital marketing agency that is reshaping the digital marketing landscape by empowering entrepreneurs to prioritize effective messaging over excessive content creation. She helps overwhelmed business owners automate their presence online so that they can take weeks off social media and still book clients to achieve a balance between business success and personal well-being. So guys, Help me in welcoming the marketing mindset and messaging expert, Megan Claw. Hi, Megan. Welcome to the show. Hi, Joanne. It's great to be here. I can't wait to dive deep, um, dive into messaging, but let's talk about your journey. Like, how did you get started? So can you bring us back? Okay, maybe tell us like, how did you get started? You know, why did you want to become a, a health coach? Yeah, definitely. So I, my background is in real estate. So that was ever since like from high school, I immediately went and got my real estate license. And that was my thing for a good couple decades. And it was something where inside I was always that, that friend that was coaching and mentoring and giving personal development books and all of that. So I really wanted to do something that made a bigger impact and would help people in a bigger way. And that's when I decided finally to even though I was doubting myself a ton, I was like, okay, I'm going to go get my life coaching certification. I did that. And I trained under somebody who was a big coach in the industry, got my feet wet and decided to launch my health coaching career. And that's kind of how it all started. Oh, and, and then it didn't work, right? It didn't work. Um, so, yes. so how, for how long did you like try to, because I believe for most of us, you know, when we first started, you know, whether it's um, a coaching business or something else, we are trying like in the first year I would say is that we are trying to do everything ourselves we are just like trying to figure it out you know learn from marketing experts attend webinars and uh, you know buy online courses and just like trying to figure it out to get clients so for how long can you maybe you know like share a bit about that journey like how long did it take for you to get your first client and and what do you do etc yeah so it was definitely a, a rude awakening. So I think a lot of people and myself, especially, it was like, okay, I'm going to start my business and then I'm going to start posting on social media and all the clients are just going to come running in. And of course that didn't happen. So I had a big, ironically, because I do social media marketing now, like I had a big fear of social media and I'm an introvert. I didn't want to put myself out there in real estate. I didn't even have social media. It was all word of mouth and referral. So uh, it was something where when I first started posting to social I decided I was just going to put stuff out there and build up free content. And then eventually, like I didn't even have a product to sell. And that was one of my big mistakes is I left so much money on the table because I started out with the intention of just gaining followers instead of a business. I'm like, what kind of business actually starts out saying, I don't want to be profitable. I just want to give away stuff for free. So 
that was one of the big learning curves for me. And it took about a year for me to develop my first product and decide to be a coach in the industry. And, and with that, it was a bunch of trial and error to figure out how to actually get people from followers to paying clients. Mm, wow. So can you bring us back to the moment when you realized um, your messaging, you know, uh, was the missing link and how that actually changed your business forever? Yes. So messaging, it was something that was, uh, I thought it was underrated. I'm like, okay, I, I'm doing good content. People are liking it. People are saying this is so inspiring. So obviously it's good. It's growing my following. But I realized something that I was giving away a bunch of tips, you know, I was saying, you know, here's five tips to healthy eating or here's things to avoid. And I was giving them essentially the whole, the whole puzzle. And what really changed for me was when I, instead of was giving just free tips constantly, I started talking about what I do as a coach and what it would be like to work with me and how I can help them with a the transformation if they worked with me one-on-one. -on -one. And that changed everything because it wasn't about, here's all my free content, go take it and run with it. It was, hmm, she has something more to offer. Let me message her and find out how I can work with her to get X, Y, Z result. Wow, I love that. So what, what are some of the common mistakes that you see a lot of people are making in today's social media world um, when, it, you know, when it comes to trying to attract or building a business online, like attract clients and build a business online? What, what are some, some of the common mistakes? The common ones that I see are one, messaging, and two, so that there's clarity with messaging, and number two is who you're attracting. So a lot of times people, and this is where I made the mistake too, is like you're trying to attract people just to follow your page and like your page, instead of thinking about who's my ideal client, who's the client that I want, who's actively looking for the solution that I offer, and they're just looking for who's the best fit for this problem I have. If we, if we don't dial that in first, then we're talking to everybody, which means we're not connecting with our ideal client. Instead, if you're able to connect with who that ideal client is and like the specific problem they have right now, instead of, for example, I see a lot of coaches say, you know, I just want to help you live your best life and be confident and, and, and they don't go deeper into like the next step or burnout, for example, I want to help people avoid burnout. Burnout's not the thing somebody's going to pay you for. They're going to pay you to help them get more clients in less time, which automatically reduces their burnout because they know that that's the real solution. Mm. So it's always about the final outcome, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you trying? What are you helping people to achieve? Like, at the end of the day, okay, so they avoid burnout because I believe all of us, you know, we want to attract clients. Um, I mean, when it comes to like business coaching or marketing coaching, I personally, I'm a confidence and visibility coach. So it's all about helping other female entrepreneurs like increase their visibility online so that they can get more clients, right? If I just tell them, I'm going to help you increase visibility, but I don't say, I'm, then you will attract clients. Then they will never want to work with me, right? Nope. I think that's what I'm picking Absolutely. up from, from you right now. So how do we refine our messaging? A great way to do it is to, and I think a lot of times we, we think we know our ideal client, but we don't realize that we're 10 steps ahead of them. So we're we're talking to them in the things that we really know that they need, but they're not ready to hear it. For example, like when I was doing, when I started my health coaching, you know, I, I was like, I, I know mindset is a huge part. Mindset is what's going to get them to actually follow the healthy eating and do the workouts when they don't feel like it. But the clients that I was trying to attract, they weren't ready to hear that. They were like, I just need a diet plan and I need a workout plan. And that's what I need. So if you can really connect with what your client, your ideal client is saying and ask questions, like get to know them in the DMs, ask them what they're struggling with, repurpose their specific language. It's going to help you connect with those people. And that's when you're going to start getting the messages of like, wow, you're in my head. How did you know that? Now I trust you because you get me. And I, I potentially want to work with you. Wow. Yeah. You know, because yeah, I always tell my people that you have to do market research. And this is what I see a lot of people don't actually do. They mm -hmm. just, you know, start a social media page, you know, start a social media account and then they create an offer and trying to sell it. But they don't do the research like as to what what I like who are you selling to and what do they actually want, right? Um, so yeah, I think that is that is really the the main 
secret, I would say, to building a business success, right? So it's never too late to do market research. Like I still do market research, right? Or, you know, it's oh, yeah. going, right? Because you are you want to keep on improving your offer and you want to attract more people. So yeah, it's also something that I'm I'm I keep on doing. So throughout your journey, you wanted to quit several times, right? On um, so what kept you going? The the main thing is just the mindset again plays such a huge role in business whether mindset plays a role in everything and you you're well aware of this it's like you know you can either focus on what's not working or you can focus on what is and a lot of times when we're newer entrepreneurs we're focusing on we're so far behind everybody else has this and I don't and we get stuck in this comparisonitis of I'm not good enough and guess what when you feel that way it just keeps piling on top of you but if we instead start focusing like, okay, what is working? Me compared to six months ago, I'm proud of myself because I did this. You know, I went live when I was scared to death to do it. I uh, Focusing on those things helps build those confidence muscles and helps you keep going in those moments where you don't get the expected result you're planning on. Well, I would like to say that the first year, because we think it's, it's easy, right? We all have been, to be honest, like, let, let's be honest, we all we have been sold to the idea that it's, easy to start a coaching business oh, and yeah. it's easy to make money right <laughs> but hanging out on the beach <laughs> collecting money like the truth is it's not right it's a struggle yeah. it's a journey oh it's funny yeah so and when people don't see the results like you said they just want to quit they just want to give up right this is not for me like why is it not you know it's, it works for everyone else but just not me so yeah. and you also mentioned that you are an on you are an introvert and i love that because i am a confidence coach and i help people who are you know, to build their confidence because a lot of people are just like you, you know, they don't want to be on camera. They don't want to show out, you know, um, because they don't want to be seen. So it's easy for me. They will be thinking, you know, they'll be saying to me, Joanne, it's easy for you to say because they are confident. I'm extrovert, right? But yeah. when it's, you know, they are hearing from someone like you. So what would be your tips or advice for people who are struggling with confidence to put themselves out there, market themselves, you know, share their voice? What would be your advice for them? I love that question. Yeah, that's something that, I can just speak from my personal experience there. Like you're the expert here in helping bring people's confidence out. For me, it really was, um, it was a pep talk with myself constantly of, I know I'm afraid to do this. I know I'm scared of being judged. I don't want to do it. I'm going to be awkward. This is going to be horrible. And I'd have those voices in my head. But then I would think about, well, what's the end result I really want? The end result is the person. The end result is the impact. The end result is the the bigger why. And when I would focus on them instead of me, it helped me get out of my own way and just show up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's the mindset part, right? What what you choose to focus on, you know, is where your attention goes, is where energy mm-hmm. flows, right? So if you focus on me, which is why people are struggling with fear or anxiety because you focus on you right it's all about yeah. what other people say you know whether my background is good enough or what should I wear what do I talk about you know what people judge me things like that so yeah it's because it's all about you so yeah. if you focus on the audience like who you want to help who you want to serve then you will not care about yourself anymore because you only care about them right so yeah thank you so much for sharing that um your personal journey is so inspiring so how did you then go from health coaching to a marketing you know starting a marketing agency yeah that's that was an interesting turn of events so i've always been a nerd for marketing like whether it was back when i was doing real estate and then getting into the health coaching field it's always been something i've been obsessed with and just have fun with and once i started growing on social media and and my health coaching business, I started attracting other health coaches that were asking me, hey, how did you do this? How, how, you know, I'm noticing you're getting all of these leads. I'm noticing you're getting, you know, this following you. And more and more people were just asking essentially how I did it. And I realized in that moment, like I was working with a lot of just in the DMs, I would have other health coaches telling me how petrified they were, how they were afraid to even put their first post out there, how they knew that they could help people. They had so much great information, but they just were stuck in their own way. And that's where my like inner mama bear type comes out, I guess. I'm like, no, you can do this. You do have a voice, like time to put it out there. Let's push you out there. And that really just birthed this whole other business of, okay, there's, there's way too many talented people out there who can make a massive difference and they're letting themselves stop them. Mm. So I want to be a part of getting them out of their own head. Mm. 
Okay, so what is your, how would you help? Okay, let's say we are someone who is um, totally new, just, you know, had an Instagram page with lead, like small following, maybe just a few hundred people and they haven't gotten their first client yet. What is your, if you could go back and start all over again, how would you, what would you do to get your first client? Mm, great question. I actually did that. So when I went from health coaching and pivoted over to business marketing, consulting, and coaching, I went from like one year in health coaching, not getting a single client to getting my first four-figure coaching client in the business side within a month. Wow. And it had nothing to do with my social media following. I started a brand new social media page. I started from scratch, had a few hundred people. It was just that I knew what I needed to do and I didn't before. So what I did was I got visible in front of more of my ideal clients. Instead of just talking to my few hundred people, like you mentioned, visibility is huge. So I went to where people had, you know, other Facebook groups or other Instagram pages. And I borrowed those audiences to put my message out in front of a bigger platform. And it helped me get that visibility and leads to convert them to clients. Yeah, that is so, that is so huge because I don't care how many followers you have, right? If they are not the right people, then it doesn't matter at all, right? It's just like you, right? You have a huge following, but you you will not have any clients. So, and there are many people who has, um, you know, a thousand, you know, more than that or hundred thousand followers on social media. But the, the truth is a lot of them actually don't have any clients. I mean, they are, it's not, yeah. they are not making money in their business, right? It's just a number. Um, and so don't, don't chase the number. So let's say someone with a following, a small following, uh, because that is also what you help people with. Like, how do you convert followers to clients? Um, let's say they are like, you know, they are your people, they are your ideal clients, but you just have a small following, maybe a hundred people. So how do you help people to convert followers to paying clients? So the big part has to do with messaging and that's where it doesn't, the beauty of it is it really doesn't matter. You can have a small audience of just a few hundred people. And I do this with clients all the time where they're just starting out, they're just starting their business. And instead of us, you know, posting a ton of content and just putting tips out there and doing all that stuff, we do just like we talked about, get crystal clear on the offer and who you're talking to. And then be confident. And even if you're not confident, still put it out there. And maybe you have a coach who's going to nudge you with this, but sell your program, sell your product, tell people how you're able to help them with a tangible result transformation. And that's what really resonates with people who want to become paying clients. Like there's two different types of consuming you can do on social media. You can just be someone who's scrolling, liking posts, and then you can be someone who's like, I have a direct problem and I'm looking for somebody who could help me. If you speak to that person, that person's going to message you and they're going to ask, okay, you have something I, I need. How do I take that next step? Mm, okay. And we all know that social media is so crowded and saturated in a sense, right? How do you how do you help people to cut through the noise and grab the attention of the ideal clients? Because we are not the only one who is doing what we are doing. There are so many people out there doing what we are doing, helping the same target audience solving the same problem, right? So how how do we like what is your tips for like standing out on social media? A big part of that is not only knowing who your ideal client is, but knowing how your solution is different from everything they've tried in the past, everything that they think that they want to avoid. How is your process going to help them when they've lost hope on everything else that's out there? And most coaches out there have that, that golden nugget. They have the reason why their method, even if it's weight loss, but they have a reason why their weight loss method works better than anything else they've tried before in the diet culture because of X. You need to capitalize on that and speak to that as much as possible to give people hope that, oh, wow, this is going to be something different. And this may actually work when all these other things I tried didn't. Yeah. Well, I love that because I personally also have tried many, many, many things, right? Um, You know, um, yeah. getting strategies, which is why right now I don't teach you all these marketing cookie cutter, you know, that's what I call it, um, cookie cutter yeah. marketing strategies. But it's like, you got to create your own aligned you know, that's why I say, you know, your own align with ability strategies, right? Because it's not, you know, the, the bigger mistake that I see a lot of people make as well is like they, they see what everyone is doing, then just copy their strategy and then they apply to their business and then it doesn't work for them, right? It just don't work for them. 
So no. yeah, yeah. Authenticity is everything. Yeah, hundred percent. Like so many people, just like you mentioned, they try to just copy what's working for somebody else. It doesn't work for them because it's not their true authentic voice and it's not their uniqueness. Yeah. And when you instead focus inward and you and you just take a little bit of time and figure out what that is that does make you special and unique and different from everything else out there, that's when you win because you stand out just automatically. Yeah. And you stand out only when you are being true to who you are, exactly. Like when you mm-hmm. are just being yourself right yeah. um yeah so thank you so much well i love this conversation the last thing i want to talk to you about is you know because you are also helping people to automate that is basically your business what is it all about automate right automation what are your tips for our listeners when it comes to automation so that we can have a bit more freedom it's not just mm-hmm. like always working always co- creating content um also like you know take care of our personal well-being yes so that's where Uh, me personally, again, like all of these things have come from personal experience. And I think that's what all of our gifts are is what we've been through and how we figured out a better way. And for me, you know, I've done the live launches, I've done the crazy 20 part email series, the complicated funnels, all of the stuff. And it was especially for me as an introvert, like it was very draining and overwhelming and exhausting to a point where it's like, is this worth it? Is this what I have to do in order to become a successful coach online? And I was like, no, there's always a different way. There's always another method. And I took a step back and realized like, okay, think about a website. A website is somewhere where people go, you don't change your homepage very often. You don't change the content every day. And people can go there. They can see what you're about. They can see how you help them. And they're going to take a step on your website if they're interested why not treat social media the same way where it's a page, like a website, where if you have new people, as long as you have new people coming in and you have that visibility aspect, you have the right type of content on your page that can be evergreen, that even if you take weeks off, it's there front and center that people can consume. You know, people typically consume the first few pieces of your content before they decide if they want to follow you. They can consume it and be like, yes, this is for me. Oh, wow, she does that too. Wait, now I need to message her. And you didn't have to create any new content. Yeah. So- I love that. Yes. And I was just, um, I did another podcast. I was just talking about, you know, stop creating content, like stop creating new content. You can just repost and repurpose. Yeah. Right? It's basically what you should be doing, right? Repurpose your, your best performing content and basically just repost them like every once in three months, right? You don't have to keep creating content because there is nothing that people are struggling with. Like, Joy, how do I... I'm sure a lot of people like, you know, also like say the th- same thing to you, right? I feel like I have to keep, you know, I'm like stuck on the content hamster wheel. Like it's just like everything I do is yeah. just great content. Yeah. So yeah, you don't have to at all. And people think, I think a lot of coaches, especially when you're newer, you feel like you have to be new and different every single post and you have to have all of these different things out there. And you really don't like simplicity converts. Keep saying the same thing over and over again. And I promise you that's going to actually be easier for you. And it's going to get you more clients. Wow, I love that. Wow. So many golden nuggets today. Thank you so much for being here. Now, um, tell our listeners where they can reach out to you on social media if they want to work with you, um, how where they can find you. Absolutely. So my main channel is Instagram and you can find me there. It's just my name, Megan, at Megan Clore. Shoot me a DM. I always answer my DMs. Happy to chat with you there. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much again. All right, guys, I, I hope you learned a lot from today's episode. I'm learning a lot from Megan today as well, personally. So if you have any question for us, you can always leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube and we will love to get back to you. Um, If you're looking for more confidence, visibility, authority, building expert tips and strategies, this podcast is for you. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss another juicy episode with me and my awesome guests. And remember to follow me as well on Instagram if you haven't already at Joanne Chan Coaching. Again, thanks for watching thanks for listening and until next time keep showing up success doesn't show up for you until you show up and pursue your own success hi there thanks for listening today and i would love to meet you at our virtual dinner party once or twice a month we come together as a community in a safe and empowering environment to help and support one another in our entrepreneurship journey so why is a virtual dinner party A VDP is not a networking event, it's not a teach event, and it's not a webinar where you don't get to talk. I want you to imagine the VDP being a cross between a mastermind, speed dating, and a Tony Robbins event. And most importantly, there is nothing for sale. 
My goal for you in attending our VDP is to help you build real confidence, gain more visibility for yourself and build a deeper connection within our community. What is the catch? There isn't one. If you are a coach, consultant, entrepreneur or podcaster, come and join us for a truly unique and world-class experience. And there is a choice of dates and times for you to attend. To ISVP, just send me a DM on Facebook with the word VDP now.